let's do a quick review. And then I'm going to pull a fast one on Teresa. Because I told her there were three biblical principles, but there's actually a fourth. And it's not just one of the principles, but it is the actually the most important <laughs> of, the, of the principles. But let's do a quick review. So principle number one, the, da- the prophecies of Daniel, they follow the same succession of kingdoms. Very simple. It, it takes you from Daniel's day forward through time until the return of Jesus and the establishment of his eternal kingdom. Very simple, cut and dried. Principle number two. Each prophecy contains two parts. A symbolic part, which is the vision, and a literal part, which is the interpretation. Okay? And then thirdly, and one one of the principles that is is more new and exciting to me as I understand it better, is that as the prophecy proceeds forward through time, God gives greater and greater details concerning Mm -hmm. the events that are going to transpire as we get closer and closer to the return of Jesus and the time of God's eternal kingdom. So exciting. (laughs) But what is principle number four? (laughs) Well... Do I get a hint? <laughs> Actually, you brought it up at the very beginning of our of our uh, podcast this morning. And I want to go back to the introduction. And Teresa, could I get you to read verses 26 through 30 here in Daniel chapter 2? And I think that the, the fourth and most important principle will become clear as you read these verses. Oh, that we're supposed to talk to God about. Okay, I'm reading the verses. (laughs) Sorry, we all know I have ADHD, right? (laughs) I jump around a lot. That's why I need somebody to help me with this. Okay, the king asked Daniel, who was also called Belteshazzar. (laughs) How do you pronounce that, actually? That's that's close. Who knows? Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, whatever. Are you able to tell me what I dreamed and what it means? Daniel answered, no wise man, magician, or fortune teller can explain to the king the secret he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who explains secret things, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen at a later time. This is your dream, the vision you saw while lying on your bed. O king, you were lying there. You thought about things to come. God, who can tell people about secret things, showed you what is going to happen. God also told this secret to me, not because I have greater wisdom than any other living person, but so that you may know what it means. In that way, you will understand what went through your mind. So yes, we take these things to God. Mm -hmm. He will be the one that reveals the answers to us. And I want to read an additional verse. Um, It's from Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. And it says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Amen. God is the revealer of secrets. If God so chooses to pull back the curtain and reveal it to us, it is, it is his will, not ours. Daniel made it very clear to Nebuchadnezzar, that it was not because of any wisdom or knowledge Mm -hmm. or ability on his part. He is just a man. And I want to make this point very clear. Teresa and I are just human beings reading the Bible. We are not interpreting the Bible. We are searching the scriptures and allowing the Bible, guess what, to interpret itself. Yes, And Teresa and I approach prophecy and we we pray that we will continue to approach Bible prophecy with the same spirit that Daniel approached. The king approached this entire subject of the dream and its interpretation. 
where does all glory go? It all goes to God. And, and, and you really have to be careful because Satan, we just saw how deceiving he was in our last podcast. So if you're talking to other people or you're going to, to anybody else but God, you're going to maybe be deceived by Satan. And also Daniel, I want to point out, didn't get his interpretation that minute. Mm-hmm. He had to pray. Mm-hmm. He had to go back to the Lord in prayer and not. So this instant gratification that we all want. Yes, yes. Not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I just want to throw this out. Um, let me read this verse first. Because this verse that, uh, verse 30 speaks from my heart when I approach my attitude that I, I always seek to have when I approach Bible prophecy and the attitude that I have, I've brought to my searching of the scriptures for years, for the many years that I've studied Bible prophecy. Verse 30, but as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. This isn't about me. Mm-hmm. This isn't about me having some great ability. I am not a Nostradamus. I am not some psychic. I am not someone claiming to have any ability. But what I bring to the table is submission to God Mm -hmm. and a willingness to be taught by the Lord. Let me read that verse in its entirety. But as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. But for our sakes, who make it known, the interpretation, excuse me, but for our sakes, who make known the interpretation to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. God reveals his secrets to humble messengers. Mm -hmm. He reveals the truths of Bible prophecy, not as something that I am going to interpret for you, but he reveals these truths that are in the scriptures themselves and brings them out so we can say, oh, look, the interpretation's right here. Yes. God explains it himself right here in his own word. Mm-hmm. This isn't me saying, well, you know, I think that this means thus and such. That's not how it works. Exactly. It must be with the same attitude that Daniel approached the subject, with humility, with contrition. The Bible says, a broken, contrite heart, God does not despise. That's right. And I was I was raised in a home where my mom did practice those things. I see this, I see that, psychic, astral projection, all these things. I talk to God. God never lies. God always tells you the truth. You can't rely on psychics. They're right sometimes. They're not always right. They might say something so vague, but there's no interpretation to go with it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really confusing out there for a lot of people to understand the difference between when God speaks to them Mm -hmm. or when they're speaking to another type of spirit. Right. And here's one thing about, about Bible prophecy. It's 100%. It's not 100%. It's not 80%. It's not 90%. It's not 95%. It's not 99.9%. Like you said, Troy, it's not even vague. He gives more and more detail. Mm-hmm. He gives us what we can handle mm-hmm. and then gives us another chunk and then another chunk. And and to kind of tie it together with last week's podcast, Jesus taught in parables. Mm-hmm. He taught the people in parables. And Bible prophecy is just another type of parable that he, that he teaches us. But those who are in part of his inner circle, he reveals those prophecies, not as private interpretation, but through explanation that is clear and concise and understandable. And he provides that interpretation as we humbly seek to understand God's will for our lives. And it only comes through humility. It does not come through through years and years of study and research into um, the interpretations and understandings of other men. Right. It only comes as we search the word of God. It doesn't matter if a person has a degree behind their name that does not give them 
somehow a greater insight into biblical understanding. Just remember, the men that, that condemned and crucified Jesus were both fluent in Hebrew and Greek. Mm-hmm. So just because someone has a degree in Hebrew, Greek, or whatever, some sort of, some sort of degree in uh, religion, in, in Bible prophecy, in Hebrew, in Greek, does not give them a leg up. Did Jesus, just to, just to ask this, did Jesus go and really seek anybody that had a degree? I think Luke and Judas were the smart ones, but there were fishermen. There, they, they were people like you and me that he went to. He didn't go to college and say, okay, who's your top student here at the school? <laughs> All right. So anyway, that, that in essence, concludes uh, the, the message that we had for this week. Um, we haven't we haven't actually decided upon where we're going to go next. I think we should go into, I was getting kind of excited about the horns. Because okay. they get kind of confusing, the goat and the sheep and the little. And it <laughs> well, maybe we should uh, progress. Uh, maybe we should go to Daniel chapter 7, which is, which is the, uh, the next of the chronological Bible prophecies. Mm-hmm. And then Daniel 8 after that. We've already taken a look at 9. But uh, there, there are there's so much information, such a wealth of understanding of knowledge. Um, but and in Daniel seven and eight, it's also going to help us recap this week because that's right. the greater detail in yep. the kingdoms. That's right, and we'll we'll be able to pull out and and uh, review these principles right. as we as we go forward. All right, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to doing that, Teresa. I am too. Really looking forward to it. Will you close us out in prayer tonight? Sure. Or today? (laughs) Father, we thank you that you are the God in heaven that is a revealer of secrets. And Lord, you've made it very clear that those who are proud, those who are filled with their own ego, their own self-worth, you despise. You despise those who would presume to to stand before you and claim to have great understanding and great knowledge. But instead, Lord, you turn to those who are of a broken, contrite heart. As Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And I just pray, Lord, that each listener out there would seek you in humility, would understand their own weakness, their own frailty before you, and acknowledge that you and you alone contain wisdom and that you reveal it as you will and not as we will. Bless Teresa and I. Bless our listeners. Bless all those who are involved in this podcast. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.